attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, thank you for attending this Land Effects webinar. My name is Forrest. Uh, some of you might have spoken with me over the phone for support questions in the past. Jeremiah and Brian are out of the country right now. Uh, they're doing some training for some of our clients. So I'll be here for you today. I will be fielding questions. Um, please feel free to type your questions in the little go to meeting question box. Um, this week's webinar will be presented by Amanda Berry from Henry Cortacas and Associates in Ontario, Canada. Amanda is a very, very talented and skilled landscape architect. She's what we call a power user of land effects. She has presented multiple webinars for us in the past, so we're very excited to have her present this webinar on how to use the very powerful land effects reference notes and cost estimates. Uh, let's learn more about them. Amanda, take it away. Uh, thanks very much, Forrest. And I just wanted to thank everybody else for taking a little bit of time out of your day uh, to join me on this webinar. <laughs> and uh, yep, so my name's Amanda Berry. I'm a landscape architect in Ontario. I'm also a green roof professional out here. And that's in Pickering, Ontario, if you know the area. And basically, we do a lot of work with land effects using rough notes. We started using land effects in 2009 and have been building our capabilities with it ever since and using it as much as we can to improve the workflow of all of our projects. These are just a few of our projects on uh, the screen showing some of the park designs that we have done in the past. Uh, anything from small basketball courts and a, a little playground to the nice big gigantic spaceship playground that you see over here. This is Baycliff Park in Whitby. Uh, definitely a great place to go and we've gotten lots of compliments on just the usability of it. But uh, every park and every design has to start somewhere. So where we start is basically with a concept. And just to let you know how uh, the kind of the structure of this webinar, we're going to go from concept straight through to construction uh, and all of the, a little bit of steps in between and uh, move on to going over setting up rough notes from the beginning, placing them, exporting for quick cost estimates and bid sheets, and then using the rough note templates, uh, which we have set up and I really hope that you do too, to speed up uh, the transition from co uh, concept into detailed design. And basically as we go through this, I'm just going to let you know on uh, how these steps can blend together depending on the project scope and size. I mean, uh, you might go from concept, you might revise your concept, especially if a public consultation is required and uh, if, if the budget changes, that sort of thing. So that's the strength and power of ref notes as we go through this is for changes especially. Yep. So the old way that uh, went back when I started in 2009 before we really got into land effects, uh, I just kind of wanted to go over these. You might recognize them as ways that you may use or that some people in your office may use. Uh, the first, of course, is using the area or distance commands in AutoCAD. And uh, these are a great trap to get yourself into, but basically you just click away uh, using the area command to get yourself a, a nice quick area of, say, your sod or your asphalt or the distance of your fence and of course this is a great way to kill a few afternoons clicking everywhere and double checking after every minor change and then always the problem is you probably better hope you quadruple checked because you likely miss the spot when you're doing this so it just requires constant repetition and takes a lot of time uh, the second method that's frequently uses, say, drawing polylines or hatches instead, and then clicking on those, 
checking your properties and then pulling out the calculator and adding those all up. And I mean, it sure is better than using the area command because at least you can change the polyline um, and uh, re-click on it. You don't have to uh, click a few times for each change, but it's still prone to calculator error, especially human error and uh, missing areas or lines along the way. And I just wanted to reiterate, um, I, I went over these mostly because it is still kind of scary uh, how tempting it is to keep using these methods in a time crunch. Even though LandFX is installed and set up, uh, even in um, our office, if it's set up and uh, we have all of our templates and everything for people to use, I um, sometimes still see people reverting back to using these two commands when they're under pressure uh, to, instead of using ref notes, and ref notes are the smart way to use these, and they should always, always be used when you can. The only time that, say, uh, the area or distance command is if you really only have a one-off calculation. So basically our general rule is is um, that if it's conceivable that a re revision could ever happen, ever, take the time and use ref notes. And this includes even if the only change for the entire drawing could be as-built drawings right at the end. Uh, and we've used it for this rule for converting old projects that didn't start with land effects but are uh, now being worked on uh, because in general, uh, converting it over, even though it takes a little bit extra time, it's really good to check for missed errors that were done originally in the plan and it's much easier and faster moving forward. It's just never good to uh, lumber on with the old way of doing things when you have this really great new tool and way to do things now. So basically, um, just as that broad introduction, you've invested in a tool and we've invested in a tool and we want to use it. So that's why we've developed our reference notes um, as far as we can into the capabilities that LandFX allows. So I'm going to move into uh, just a, an example of how we do this. This is an actual park that we're working on um, in, in Ontario. And just like every other project, you start off with a concept. So this was our concept. Um, LandFX does have concept graphics, and we do use those for some. But for this pr project in particular, uh, especially for most simple parks, we like to actually start off with a hand sketch and full scale so you can scale it, uh, draw it all out send it off to the client so that they get a feel for the space and can offer um, uh, comments right from the beginning. And then um, from this, we usually just do a rough costing. So we'll, I'll just sit there and count up some trees, times them by a rough uh, number. So here there's about 42 deciduous trees, times about 450 installed for a tree. You've got 18,000, 19,000 right there. And then using a ruler, we'll do, uh, there's about 150 meters of asphalt path at 2.4 meters wide. That's about 17,000. The park shelter is 40,000. We go on from there and we start our, um, our cost estimate uh, in Excel just using that really basic, listing them all out. I'll get into how, um, in a bit how we move on from that. But basically, then the client looks at it, they approve. That's great. So now we're going to go into the preliminary drawing, and that means bringing it into CAD for the first time. That's what I mean by that. Uh, so what we want to do is we can use more CAD-based graphics or if it's just a small part going for consultation, uh, something more refined and that in order to render. And basically, the whole point of this webinar is that as soon as you get out of that hand drawing stage, you want to start those ref notes. 
um, in the way especially that you're going to need them for construction. Uh, not to make them con conceptual rough notes, you want to make them as detailed as you can because you want to look ahead and for projects like this construction is always the goal so you might as well go for it. So I'm just going to bring up a drawing now and we're going to get right into it. So this is our park and what we've done here, we've brought in our concept sketch and sketched over it with lines, obviously on the appropriate layers. And we've got something basic to work from. So the first step, of course, you've, uh, there's lots of webinars covering it. You set up your project, you set up your scale, everything's good to go. And you've drawn everything out. We've placed a few trees already here. And now we're going to get right into rough notes. So I haven't placed anything for my pavers or site furniture. So I need to bring those in. I'm going to bring these up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> I jumped ahead while I was setting up this webinar. And it doesn't really help with all of these things in here. I wanted to show you how to bring them in right from the beginning. Okay, so I have a blank slate here. And I'm going to bring them in. But instead of uh, just starting them off from scratch, what we've done is we've set up a uh, a template that I can quickly pull these from because a lot of these items that I'm going to bring in for medium duty asphalt paving and a bit of uh, stamped and colored asphalt and some benches that are pretty uh, standard to this uh, municipality that we're doing the park in, we use them pretty frequently. So what we've done is we've put them in our template so I can just really quickly grab them. I could grab them from the uh, jobs that we did before for that municipality, but that involves the user knowing exactly what job it was and finding all that. But instead of that, I have one general reference note library. So I'm going to go to import instead of clicking new and find my reference note library. Now what we normally use is this reference note template down here, but uh, in the interest of uh, progression, I've moved a little bit beyond in this webinar than how uh, this reference note template is set up and added a bit more information. It's an ongoing process setting up a template, so I'm showing you the ideal, especially the ideal that we would like to have. So I've set up a temporary reference note webinar template right here for us to use. So I'm going to go into here. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, okay. Bear with me, I didn't update the open DCL on this computer. This isn't my normal computer. Right, and just so everybody knows, <laughs> that was a, a recent uh, update that uh, Jeremiah sent out with Land Effects utilizes the open DCL library more efficiently. And so if that happens, just quickly update this, and that'll be uh, resolve all those errors. Um, well, I guess. It, I guess this is probably a good time if there's any questions. You know, there haven't been any questions yet. Um, I think everybody's just, what is DCL, somebody said, actually. That is, that's actually the driver that allows AutoCAD to use a really fancy dialog boxes and communicate with our Land Effects server. Uh, so it's a third-party driver that enhances AutoCAD. And it that way you can, for instance, you can... Uh, use those dialog boxes to communicate for our tree library or irrigation library. You're going to have to restart uh, CAD. Yeah. And, okay. And so, you know, yeah, it's just one of those things, uh, one of those many, many things that Land Effects utilizes to enhance AutoCAD, which is our primary goal. So, sorry about that, everybody, but shouldn't take too long. It's just a real quick install and then restart CAD and then we're good to go. So, Sorry, just opening it back up. <laughs> I 
a minor little hiccup there. <laughs> it's not a webinar without a minor hiccup. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it's not AutoCAD drafting without a minor hiccup. Too. <laughs> no, that's that's more accurate. <laughs> Well, that, I guess that's that's part of all of it, right? You want to make things as fast as possible so that little things like this don't actually slow down your workflow. At that's least that's what we try for. Great. Okay. So, reference notes, import. RefNote Webinar Park template. Okay. There we go. It works. Okay. So, continuing to move on, I have this temporary uh, template that I've set up with all of the items that we're going to use. If you go into, uh, if you have a larger template, you can actually go through and click and press shift and then keep clicking and you can add them all. Or you can just start from the top, shift and click to the bottom grab them all and add them all to the project. And the last time I did this, it took a little bit of time because they're all fairly set up. Yep, and it's also importing details. So I'm going to click done here and they should pop up. So you can see all of these reference notes also have a detail associated with them. And just a little bit about how we set up our reference notes. Uh, we actually number them. Uh, I've, I've gone over this one in another webinar, so you can look back at that, but we number them similar to how we file them in the detail with the CSI master format. You can number them however you want, however works best for you. Um, and But in terms of the actual reference notes, we found that when you're using them in a uh, reference note template, it's best to name things from general to specific. So if I go into my reference note template, template here. You can see all of these pillars are called masonry pillar first and then it goes specific. Or for uh, our fitness stations, I have fitness station, uh, manufacturer, and then the name of it with a model number. So that's generally how we um, organize them so that they're easy to pick out from our template. And then if I go into one of these, um, it has a different bench than the actual bench here. I just picked out a, a symbol from the Land Effects Library. But uh, you can see here, I've already set a cost to this. It already has a detail set. This is installed cost based on previous experience. Uh, the detail that we need with it is set, and the symbol is already set. So really, I don't need to spend any time making my reference notes or even importing details. Uh, that's one of the tricks to go really quickly from your concept to your uh, design details and construction documents. So we're going to cancel out of that and we're going to start placing some things. So uh, when you're placing things, again, uh, think about how you're placing them um, uh, based on how you drew them. So it takes a little know-how in that case. So I'm going to, I'm going to place my medium duty asphalt here, click place. And I'm going to find, oh, actually, I'm going to do something else first, and you'll see why. So I'll go back into my reference notes. I'm going to first click my uh, wood mulch play surface and place that first. That's because this is an interior. This is how I found it really fast to do this. So that placed in there. And then I'm going to place my medium duty asphalt on top of it. And I know they have multiple, um, but I also find it fast to just click on the hatch, and it goes to your hatch properties and select that interior line. Uh, just because I've had, uh, sometimes you might come into a problem where you, you place this outside one first, you associate it to that line, but then you don't want two lines, so you try and click this fiber mulch onto that line, it tells you it's already associated with this hatch. Uh, so little tricks like that can help make it go a little bit faster. And I'm just going to make that so that line 
plots and then place some site furniture. So we'll go back into reference notes, maybe place a games table. It's going to let me? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to click it here. Can't see. It almost did it. I'm just going to copy that one instead. I don't think it did the second one. And place some two games tables in here. And then uh, we'll place a garbage bin. And I'm actually going through placing all of these because we're going to use them uh, in the cost estimate. So bear with me while we place everything in here. We have a light pole. We're going to put that one in. Uh, sorry about the, don't show me these again. It's a different computer. <laughs> Some of these I just have generic symbols attached to. Um, if you don't have all of your symbol libraries in just yet, uh, saved into the land effects system, you can um, go to your manufacturer and get the symbol from them if it's, say, different, and put it in for now, and then um, save it into your library later so that you can actually assign it to your reference notes so that it comes in properly. We did have one question come in. Um, somebody was sure. asking, asking about explaining the process of properties with regard to that paving hatch. Sure. Um, So the properties are, I guess, are if they're talking about the properties over here, just looking at the the areas, or yeah, I think that section not. where you where you uh, where you did the hatch multiple, basically using the properties. Oh, okay, sure, using the properties instead of the the land effects yeah. multiple. I haven't I haven't personally used the land effects multiple. That's why I didn't want to show it off in a webinar. Right. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, basically what I did was um, for this hatch, I just, you click on it, and then in the newer versions of AutoCAD, I, newer as in the last three or four years, um, you, it pulls up this ribbon right away, and you can, it has all of it, the properties of that particular hatch. All I did was click on Select over here, uh, in order to add more outlines to this hatch. So it's already associated with that outer outline over here. And I wanted to make sure it didn't also didn't go into the inner outline here. So I needed to add that inner outline to it. So I clicked on the hatch and just select and went in there. If you make a mistake, you can also remove it. So if you click on remove, you can remove that one. And it goes back, select, sorry if I'm going too fast for the webinar, click. I just right click there to accept it. And uh, it's in and it's going to be calculating correctly for you. Yeah, just those, those little tricks are pretty handy. And this will be recorded, so if it went too fast, you can always go back and review later. Thank you. No problem. So here I'm just going to put in a few more benches. I'm using hotkeys. I really hope that uh, you guys out there use hotkeys as well. It makes everything fast. I'm going a little bit faster than I normally would. Just in order for the sake of the speed of the webinar <laughs> and getting to everything that we want to cover. Uh, did I get all of the ref notes? So that's also a good thing about bringing from a ref note template. I know I'm selling it pretty hard here. Um, is that you also kind of get a list of everything that you should have placed to remind you what haven't I calculated yet. So I've got that, that, impressed and colored asphalt, haven't placed that. It's actually changing it. It's just uh, it's the old hatch is exactly the same as the new one. It's just calculating now. 
and then uh, my galvanized chain link fence. Now I actually already set this one up. So this is a length instead of an object or an area that we've been placing before. So if I go into edit, I've already set it to the layer that I want it to be on. And I set that in the template. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it might import the layer of like create a layer in this name, it might ne not necessarily uh, import all of the attributes to that layer, like the color or the line type or anything like that. But I think it will create that layer in this drawing if it isn't there already. I'll have to double check that one though. Can't say that for certain. Uh, this, this drawing already has a layer in it, so I wouldn't be able to check that here. And uh, I've already set up the decorative metal fence and the galvanized chain link fence. That's the decorative metal fence down here at the bottom. Uh, I've set those up so that uh, they already calculate. And then we just have sod. So for this one, I'm just going to place this. And I'm going to use that trick again with the, the hatches. So I've got a line going all the way around my entire site. And I'm going to select and just get rid of it from here. And from here. And from here. And let's just make sure that that works. Oh, it didn't get it. There we go. That got it. OK. And I'm actually going to turn this sod. Uh, I like to make it gray just so that it won't show up too much, like it won't overpower my, my drawings, but it will clearly be there and send it to the back so that it doesn't, um, the way we have things set up, we, d we have overwrite for our plot style. So we, um, we send the hatches to the back. Otherwise, they'll plot gray over top of gray, uh, black lines. If you ever see that, that's what's happening. Okay, so that's all um, that's all set there. We've assigned some areas and volumes, some objects, some lengths. And so um, it, again, if you uh, say you need to create a, a new reference note, uh, there's lots of webinars out there on how to create your own reference note. These are just some tips and tricks on how to create, like what uh, parameters to kind of set them up for. And then what you can do actually is if you set it up for this specific drawing, but you know that you're going to use it a lot in other projects as well, maybe a, a different kind of asphalt or a different thickness of asphalt or sand instead of uh, fiber mulch for the, for the playground, you can set that up the proper way in this, uh, in this job under your ref notes here and then move over to your template, import it in your template, and resave your template. And that, that way it's there for everybody to use. But the important part is to set it up right from the beginning with the cost and the detail and everything. Um, so we've done this, and we go to our drawing. Here, and you can start uh, calling things out. What we did, since technically in this stage of our, um, of our project, we were still in the concept stage. So we just made this uh, concept layout instead because uh, people in the public, they don't really need to know what uh, the detail number is. So we just had the, our simple um, callouts here, just using the, the callout uh, button uh, down here where with the arrow and and the text leader. So that's all we used for that. Um, everything, again, is all set up so that it's consistent with the rest of our drawings. But, when, um, but while you're doing this, you can also now at least start your detail page, um, which is what we did on this project as well. So with those reference notes that you've 
that we had imported from our template, uh, they had details attached with them. Now, what happens, I forgot to show you what this project looked like before I imported all of those reference notes, but there weren't any details in it. So, and now if I um, open up the detail manager, it will have all of those details in it that I imported, plus a few more that I put in here for uh, deciduous tree planting, coniferous tree planting, all that, that I don't necessarily attach to a reference note because uh, they're pretty easy to find. But now that they're all already in here, you can start grabbing your trash bin and just start placing it the same way that you do with every other drawing. So this is LD1, and that's details one. I'm just setting up the sheet so that you'll know once you go through this entire process um, at least once, you'll see what uh, you'll have to do it too. <laughs> Again, lots of rep, uh, webinars out there for you to reference. And just start placing all of these in. And that's how fast it is to uh, start moving your project along from the concept stage and putting in all of these details. So you can go ahead um, on your projects, obviously, and continue putting in all of those details. What I'm going to move on to now is uh, exporting a, a cost estimate for the client to use. In this case, the client was the municipality or the town, and uh, they were going to a public meeting. And so they don't want to show the public something that they can't actually afford. So we need to provide quick cost estimate at this stage right now. And we have a template for that as well. Um, we've been in talks, I guess, with Land Effects about uh, kind of connecting those templates. It's a little hard right now, uh, especially with all the other great features that they're working on. So uh, what we do is go into our reference notes and go to schedule. And uh, I, for our office, we don't normally use the reference notes in the drawing as a schedule, but uh, your office may, so you can do that. But when we go to our cost estimate, we take it to a spreadsheet in Excel um, and include the cost down here so that we can import all of the information over. So I'm going to open up my... Um, my cost estimate first because Excel has this funny little th thing um, where it doesn't like to open two separate windows separately, uh, which is very handy on Windows computers for it to do that. Uh, but if you open up your template first, which I have right here, and everything's ready, basically we start with just one uh, category uh, and then start copying the categories along. I'll show you how to do that when we add another category. And I partially filled it in here, but we're going to fill it in more. Um, so if I go into here, now that I already have an Excel window open for you um, Windows 7 or 8 users out there, or XP, if you go to Spreadsheet now, it will open up a separate window. And it did, right here. So that's all the information that LandFX exports, and that's all we need. Basically, when we started, when I started my reference notes, I named them exactly as the, I would want them to show up in my cost estimate. Uh, in bid sheets, we also pro put provide in place up here, but I found that not very. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to search through hundreds of reference notes when provide in place is the first thing in each reference note. So we cut that out and just general to specific like this, and that's exactly how we're going to put it in our cost estimate. So I'll pull that up again. And we'll start moving them over. Uh, so fencing, let's grab our fencing over here. Fences and gates, there we go. 
it calculated it already. And if that number isn't what you're expecting, um, make sure that you, you double check that you actually did set every fence that you put in your drawing um, to the right layer so that it's calculating. You always want to double check. LandFX is great. It's an amazing tool, uh, but it, there's always that human error function of, of everything, and you need to make sure that you set up the tool the right way in order to reference it. And I, basically what I'm doing is just going into Excel or whatever other spreadsheet format um, program that you may be using. Uh, but I, we use Excel. And going in, highlighting both of them, Control-C to copy, and uh, putting them right into my spreadsheet here. Oh, that did not work. I'm trying to go too fast. Uh, I'm just going to type it in. 53.5 and 200. And you can see over here that my um, my cost estimate is already starting to calculate automatically. So I've set up these cells so that they automatically times those two cells together and everything just starts calculating down and everything down here is already set up to add everything in. So in the future, if I need to change something, all I need to do now is change the quantity or change the price if that's, if that's the case. Um, and continue through here. And we do the same things with uh, the trees. So uh, again, you can go through here, grab all of your items, pop it in, and, and plug in a price, and put it all in for the trees. It's the exact same process. I don't normally save these. You can if you want. And I just go to the schedule. And instead of doing a drawing schedule, I go to spreadsheet. And I've already set up uh, the defaults to how this uh, will output, because I want it to output differently than I want than I have it in my drawing. Um, for instance, in, in our drawing schedules, we normally have our names in separate columns. Uh, and we don't include costs. I do want to include costs. That should have been clicked. But there's, there's a few things in here that we've changed specific to our spreadsheet output. So it's easier to put into Excel. Um, and I'll show you where you can change that once I just click OK here. And you can see uh, the names in separate columns. The reason why I turned that off is so that it would do this and put it all really quickly in one cell. So I can just go in, grab that, and put it in here and start filling this in. And usually what I do is uh, I just grab the size under units, put that in, and it's just as fast to type wire basket and continue in. Uh, if in your template, I, I mean, if you have experience in Excel, you know that if you run out of rows here, you can just click over here at the at the side, um, copy it, and then insert copied cells, and it will make one right above. And the great part about using that is that by inserting it that way, it's, it's fast, it's there, and most importantly, this sum will continue to include it. And then you can keep adding that in. If you need to, and you use that same function to, if you need uh, another section, uh, you just control C, or I like to grab right down so I get that space as well. Insert copied cells. And you can change this to, if you, um, say furniture. And start 
delete those and start adding in your site furniture from your other uh, export. And that's how we start building up our, uh, our cost estimate. I'm probably running short on time, so I'm not going to go too far into actually creating the entire cost estimate. But yeah, so uh, you'll have something a bit more formal and at least something to give your client as, as a basis, but it's still very, very advanced, really easy to update to a, a construction or a tender. So if I go into uh, something that we completed, you can see it all filled out here. And this can easily be converted over to uh, a construction. So that's what I mean. When it, it's very uh, fluid process, it's not necessarily a step by step by step by using this method. You just you start out with this, and um, it's really only minor changes from there. All I have to do is add a few more um, uh, items to the top about uh, when you're uh, items to the top about when your bid closes and uh, you're, you're good to go for a construction tender uh, bid sheet instead. So that's what I mean by converting and moving on through to construction. Basically, your cost estimate is your bid sheet, and you're already done. It'll just take a few revisions along the line, which is the design process. Uh, I'm going to close this down because my computer is screaming at me. <laughs> <laughs> As computers are wont to do. <laughs> Great, and then okay. um, we'll just, we'll just um, just a little bit more. Basically, once you're done your project, take it uh, for this one. We took it to the public. Uh, for this, we used uh, the SketchUp connection pu plugin. Uh, with LandFX as well. There's lots of great webinars on that plugin, uh, but this is something that we created for this park for the uh, public meeting. And um, and then basically you get a few curveballs in your project, which is uh, the public wants a toboggan hill on this project. Uh, basically, you can see from this picture, this is actually uh, during construction uh, before the public meeting, they were setting the initial grade of the park. Uh, it, because it, just due to the process, it, it was the developer that was doing this, and that's the topsoil pile that they stripped all the existing topsoil, they piled it there, but the project, uh, the construction, went on a bit longer, it went into the winter, that entire pile got covered with snow, and you can imagine anybody who's been in a place with snow, it's a lot of fun to, uh, the bigger the hill, the better the toboggan, the toboggan run. So everybody in the public meeting asked for a toboggan hill. Um, and so if the public wants a toboggan hill, well, the public gets a toboggan hill. And so that's uh, a curveball, obviously, and that completely changed our design. But because of all the reference notes that are set up in this project, um, all we really had to do was import, uh, redraw the pathway around the playground, because it's a simple playground. Uh, and we eventually moved the uh, structure as well up to here based on some, um, some discussions. It took a few revisions, uh, but we eventually came to a decision on how to do it, and it was really easy to change. Like Within a day, we were able to change everything, update the cost estimate, and we're good to go again. And that, that's the beauty of getting everything set up right from the beginning. It makes it a lot faster. I cannot stress that enough. Um, well, I'm kind of running shorter on time, so I was going to show the revised drawing, but I won't do that. And instead, uh, we'll just move to the construction drawing. So basically, uh, you'll just keep moving on with that and uh, start detailing. So I'll just show you a quick of what this eventually turned out to be. It's just opening up the PDF. And that's basically how we changed it. Um, we're also using 
Civil uh, 3D, so that's where the grading colors are coming from. Is that showing? Forest? I'm sorry, what? I assume that it's that? showing on the screen. <laughs> I was just uh, making sure that, uh, that it, was, it was lagging on my computer. Oh, no, it's good. Okay. Great. Okay. So that's uh, completely changed but using the same reference notes. We just move them around and we're easily able to change the cost estimate to what I showed you before. Um, again, placing, once everything's in there, it's really quick to also start placing um, the detail callouts because your details are already in there um, with all of their names. It just, it moves along really quickly. And um, as long as you use land effects to its potential, you'll be able to get a lot out of it. Um, setting up the dimension styles properly, is, it's a big task, but you have to do it because it'll save you so much time in the end. Um, and all of that. Uh, just a little bit more to go over. And we're almost done. Uh, just what to take away from this. I've repeated it so much time, so many times during this that you're probably tired of it now, but <laughs> just spending the time to set up your reference notes during the concept stage, the way you plan to use them in the bid sheet at the, for the construction documents is worth every second of time you put into it. It will save you so much with all the revisions that can happen to these projects. Even small projects are, can be complicated and go through a lot of revisions. So no matter how small the project is, uh, you'll find, you'll realize after you don't do it that it probably would have been worth it. So just realize that at, at the beginning and use what you have because efficiency is key. It's, it's your goal and that's what you want to do because that's what makes you profitable as a business. So use everything that you can and make smart choices that will make your life e as a drafter easier. Uh, for instance, set up a ref note for everything. Um, it, it will help you so that you don't forget anything. Uh, if you don't set up a reference note for the park shelter, you might forget it on the cost estimate or something like that, or even the playground. It's happened where you forget to put the playground on the cost estimate for a park. And if you have a reference note for it, it would be a lot faster to do it and uh, just catch you on your human errors that happen. Um, and it's okay to question the computer. Uh, do double check the outputs that LandFX gives you with uh, just click on the hatches and do a quick calculation. Yep, okay, my mind's at ease. It, I caught everything. Because what can happen is you're not a perfect drafter. And sometimes uh, land effects will be calculating correctly, but you won't have set it up to calculate correctly. So what you need to do is double check. And uh, the last note that I just want to say is to use the plant check every time. Again, you're not the per a perfect drafter. And again, that can help you with uh, your cost estimates when you bring it from land effects over to the Excel. Because what I found happens is sometimes uh, you're clicking away really quickly and a plant gets copied, but it gets copied a million miles away in the drawing and you don't see it. So if you use the plant check, it's, it'll highlight it and you can find it and make sure it doesn't affect your, your cost estimates or uh, any part of your drawing. And so I just want to thank you for your time, everybody's time in this. I really do appreciate it. And I always like sharing the knowledge of things, uh, the, the road bumps that we've come along the way and realized that we can easily overcome with this program. Well, we really appreciate your uh, perspective, Amanda. It's, it's great to, to see what, what the users are doing with the software. Um, Thank you for presenting. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, once again, I just want to remind you that this is being recorded, and we will post it on our website, um, if not later today, by Monday at the latest. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you again.